Hey, thank you everybody for visiting our website and taking a look at this video today. My name is David Shepard with Mojo Tone, and today I'm gonna to talk to you about our new solderless 335 wiring harness. First of all, let me say, if you're not comfortable installing into a semi-hollow or hollow body guitar, you should consider taking it to a qualified technician who has, who has the tools, experience, knowledge, and everything it takes to install it for you. Now, why would you wanna change your electronics to begin with? A lot of your guitars, beautiful guitars made with excellent woods, everything else, but the electronics a lot of times are the one thing that they cut costs on. The potentiometers, the switches, the jacks, a lot of those things are pretty cheap, uh, have very wide tolerances to it, the tapers aren't very good on the pots, all kinds of things like that. Whereas the Mojo Tone harnesses, we use all of the highest quality components. We're using CTS pots that are made to our specifications. So they have the, the tightest tolerance. They're gonna be as close to 500K as you can get. The uh, taper is as smooth as you can possibly get out of a CTS pot. And of course, they're built very rugged and strong to last a very long time, along with the Switchcraft switch and jack, which are the industry standard for being built very robust to last a very long time as well. Our wiring is 50s wiring. What that means is we are copying the late 50s Gibson style wiring where they ran the capacitor to the output of the, of the volume pot. What that means is when you roll your volume pot back, you're getting the true tone of the pickup all the way through the spectrum of the pot. You're not gonna lose your high end as you're rolling back. And the solderless, why would you want solderless? Solderless is very, very nice when you are swapping pickups, especially in a 335 style guitar. If you've ever swapped pickups in these guitars, you know that you have to take everything out. You have to take the pots, the switch, everything out of the guitar to take the pickups off and put new pickups on. Well, the solderless feature saves you from having to do that. You put the harness in and you can swap pickups in and out of the F-hole without taking the electronics back out again. Of course, that saves you a ton of time and you don't have to solder. Before you purchase your 335 harness or any harness from Mojo Tone, you should look at, these, at the measurements that we provide on our website that show the spacings that we build each harness to. The 335s can all be slightly different, so it's very important that you measure the spaces between your volumes and tones, switch, jack, everything to make sure it matches exactly what we have listed on our website. There is a little bit of wiggle room, but it's not, there's not enough room to go further apart, that's for sure. And lastly, before you consider installing your, your 335 harness, you need to understand where the guitar was made. A lot of the uh, overseas made guitars will have metric size pots, switches, jacks inside of them, which means the holes are gonna be smaller or too small for the US spec CTS and Switchcraft that we offer on our harness. So you'll need to make the holes larger for those to fit with a step drill bit, a reamer, something of that sort. And again, if it's something you've never done or you're not comfortable with, it's very highly recommended that you take it to a qualified technician. So when you receive your harness, it'll be packaged in a nice box like this on a template ready to remove and install into your guitar. Also, we do include a very detailed wiring diagram. Our wiring diagram is very straightforward. You just look at the wiring reference and you'll see that B stands for bridge ground, which is your tailpiece. And then you have a one for your bridge pickup hot, a G for your bridge pickup ground, a two for your neck pickup hot, and a G for your neck pickup ground. And all of those go into easy to install screw terminals. One thing you'll need to consider is we do not include knobs or switch tip. So if you have metric knobs, metric switch tip, you'll need to purchase US spec knobs and switch tips separately. We do sell those on our website. All of our, all of our knobs and switch tips are US spec. Tools needed will be a half inch drive or an adjustable wrench plier, something to use around the, uh, the nuts for the pots and the jack. You'll need wire cutters for cutting the leads on your pickups. You'll need wire strippers if you have multi-conductor leads on your pickups that you need to strip for the uh, wire to go into the solderless harness. Um, if you don't have multi-conductor and you have the external Gibson braid uh, type wire, you'll need some sort of a sharp pick to uh, 
pick it apart so that you can have two, two wires, a ground and a hot. Included is a small flathead screwdriver for the solderless terminal blocks. For the switch, to uh, tighten the round knurled nut around the switch, you'll need either this really custom tool from Stuart McDonald that's made specifically for that. If you don't have that, you can use some uh, needle nose pliers that have a little bit of grip on it. You'll need a Phillips head screwdriver to remove pickup rings, pickups, pick guard, anything else off the guitar with. You'll need a paper clip. You'll use this for fishing the wires later. And you'll need six pieces of a foot or so of string cut ready to tie to the pots, the switch, the jack, and tape and a marker so that you can label your pickups after they're uh, through the F-hole. So now we're gonna prep the guitar for the wiring harness. I've saved time on the video by installing the pickups ahead of time. I went ahead and labeled the neck pickup with an N. Um, you can label the bridge pickup as well, but as long as you just label one of them, you're good to go. Uh, you do have the ground wire from the stop bar or the tailpiece. Uh, that has to be ready to go as well. I just have everything outside the F hole here. Uh, went ahead and removed the pick guard and everything out of the way to make it easy to install. So we're gonna start removing everything from the template by loosening the nuts from the pots and the switch. Using a half inch drive or your adjustable wrench. And then using the pair of pliers for the knurled round nut around the switch. We'll just take everything off and put it aside. So you'll go ahead and start a regular knot. And then you're gonna put it between the split of the pot all the way down to the bottom. And then give it a pull real tight. And then come back and do one more knot to secure it. And then you'll repeat that step on all four pots. With the switch, I'm going to tie that knot down below the collar of the thread. All right, so you're gonna use the washer from the jack and you're gonna tie the string around it. And that's gonna go underneath to pull the jack through the guitar body. We're gonna go back and cut off all of the excess string so that it does not get in your way. Okay, so at this point, you can pop everything off the board by pushing it through the bottom. Next, we're gonna take the washer with the string through the back of the input jack. So typically you'll have two types of lead wires for a humbucker. You have four conductor, and then you have vintage Gibson braid. The vintage Gibson braid has the lead wire on the inside, 
and the external braid, which is your ground on the outside. What we need to do is separate these into two separate wires to go into the solderless terminal. We're going to push the vintage braid back to get it loose, and then I'll use a pick. Some people will try to open a hole in the braid and pull the wire through. I find that to work sometimes and sometimes it doesn't. The easiest way is just to pick the braid apart. You just start pulling it apart with the pick a couple pieces at a time. Once you have it picked apart, you can twist it into a pigtail, just like this. Then you can push the cloth back on the internal lead wire. So now you have your ground and your hot for your solderless terminal. Now if you have a four conductor humbucker, you will need to check with the pickup manufacturer to see what the color code is. But generally, you'll strip all of these wires back about a quarter of an inch. Then you will just twist the strands tight. If it is a Mojo Tone pickup, you will take your white and red wires and twist them together. This is where you need a soldering iron because you'll have to solder that connection together. Once you have the red and white wires connected together, you fold them back and tape over them. Then you'll twist your green and bare wires together to make the ground. Then you will end up with just a black wire for your hot and the green and bare wires going to ground. The next step is to have everything set for the install. You'll want to use a cloth or a t-shirt to protect the top of the guitar and then we'll start installing. I'll start by feeding everything through the F-hole of the guitar very carefully as to not bend or damage any solder connections. Once everything's inside the guitar, you can use a screwdriver to push everything into position where you want. The next step, you're going to want to open up a paper clip. and bend a little hook on the end, just like this. You're gonna use the hook on the end of the paper clip to find and pull through the strings of each of the pots. Go ahead and start lining everything up. And just to note, 
The holes on this guitar have already been enlarged to the correct size. You'll want to do that before you install the harness. Once everything is pulled through, I'm going to start installing all of the nuts and washers. Just finger tight for now. For the jack, I temporarily put the nut on to hold it and then I'll get the washer out after a minute. At this point, you can take the strings off of the pots and the switch. For the jack, I'm gonna fish out the washer with the paper clip. Once the washer's out, I'm going to pull the jack up against the body using the hook of the paper clip and then remove the nut. Next, I'll insert the washer and the nut over the paper clip and fasten everything tight. For the switch, I like to angle my switch like this. For the switch, you can tighten the nut using this specialized tool from Stuart McDonald, or if you're very careful, you can use a pair of pliers. Okay, so now we're gonna install all of the, the wires that have been prepared into the solderless terminal. Here I have my ground and hot wires separated for the terminal. I've also got the ground wire from the tailpiece or the bridge. Everything is ready to go. You'll see on the solder block that you have these screws on the top. You'll wanna to make sure that everything is completely loose and open. I'll start by looking at the diagram. You can see the diagram matches the block you have. You have the letter B on one of the terminals, and B represents where you're gonna put the bridge ground wire or the tailpiece ground wire. Th and then you have your number one, which is going to indicate the bridge pickup hot wire. The G next to number one is the ground wire for the bridge pickup. Number two is going to be the neck pickup hot and the G next to number two is gonna be the neck pickup ground. So if you just follow the wiring reference, it'll be exactly the same on the terminal. So first, I'm gonna take my bridge ground wire and insert it into the B terminal and tighten everything securely.
Now I want to look for the bridge pickup. I've labeled the neck pickup with an N so that I know the other pickup is the bridge pickup. We'll start with the bridge pickup and go to the neck pickup. Let's do the ground wire first. So we'll go into the G terminal next to number one and push it in as far as it will go. Then we'll tighten the screw down until the terminal is secure. You can also use pliers to help get everything in. Next, I'll install the neck pickup wire hot into terminal number one. You can repeat these steps on the neck pickup going into terminal two and the G next to terminal two. Everything is in now, we can secure the wires with a zip tie like this. Next, we'll push everything through the F-hole and push it aside out of the way. Later on, if you need to change pickups, you just bring the solderless block back out of the F-hole and you're ready to go. Lastly, you'll put everything back on the guitar, the pick guard and the knobs. To put the knobs on, turn all of the pots fully clockwise until they stop. Make sure the knobs and switch tip are designed to go on the American-made CTS pots and the Switchcraft switch. Metric knobs will not fit. And then typically you'll line up your number 10 and 0 on the top. This is not a very strong spot, so you don't want to push too hard. So I'll put my finger underneath it to give some support. So thanks again for checking out this video on installing our new 335 solderless wiring harness. For more tech videos and support, please check out mojotone.com. If you like the style of this video, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to stay up to date on all the latest content from Mojotone. Manager here at Mojotone, and I want to introduce uh, our new custom 50 